All right, so last time we took a look at the Slate AX, a new Wi-Fi 6 pocket travel router from GL iNet. And we set up NordVPN, that way we could use Dallas as our location, no matter where we were in the world. But now what if we want to take that to the next level and actually use the IP address that's here at my house, anywhere in the world. So that's where this second pocket travel router comes in. This is the Opal. It doesn't have Wi-Fi 6, but it still has gigabit ethernet ports. And uh, for this setup, I'll be using Wi-Fi, but theoretically, I would plug this little router into my home router uh, that my internet service provider provides to me. And this would be left at the house. This one's gonna go with us and connect to this one to share the IP address that's here at the house. All right, so the Opal, again, it has ethernet ports already and it has Wi-Fi. And for this demo, I'm gonna be using Wi-Fi just because everything is here on the table. Uh, so from the computer, let's get the screen recording set up here. Okay, so each of these devices have their own SSIDs. They're both on right now. The SSID is on the bottom of the device. In this case, it's GL SFT 1200. So I connected to that one. And as, as usual, you would go to 192.168.8.1 on either device. I already logged in. So once you log in, you get here. Your first time, you're obviously gonna need to set up your admin password. Once you log in, you'll either need to plug in the ethernet cable, or in my case, I already connected to the Wi-Fi. Um, you, know, you would typically hit scan, find your Wi-Fi network, connect to that. And now that we're connected, the main things that we're gonna focus on is, I guess, uh, first thing is make sure that there's no upgrade. So this one's already on the latest firmware. And since I have residential internet, my IP address can change. So we're gonna use something called remote access under the applications tab here. And we're gonna turn on dynamic DNS. The user interface is a little bit poor here. I actually missed this the first time I was making the video. So I'm actually remaking the video again to be more efficient. There's a little very hard to see toggle. You need to toggle that on to enable DDNS. You don't need to enable any of the other things. In fact, that'll actually make you less secure if you enable those things. So just leave those off. You do need to check uh, to agree to the terms of service and privacy policy, and then you're gonna hit apply. On the bottom of the device is a device ID, and that device ID is also visible here if you hover over this information bubble. If you hover just right, you can uh, double click on that and copy that. That, instead of using your IP address, you can use that address. So this address will always be updated. Anytime your IP address changes, this little device is gonna reach out to uh, GLD's DDNS service here and update the IP address automatically. So this is gonna be useful later. Uh, I like to use Notepad because I'm a little bit old, I guess. So I just open up a new Notepad file and I'm pasting in that address. And now we'll go on to the next step. Uh, well, now that this is enabled, we could do a DNS test. And you'll see your, your residential IP address here. In this case, we're also getting an extra warning that we are behind a NAT. So it just kind of means that we're gonna have to do some extra setup as far as port forwarding. Uh, so I guess on the topic of port forwarding, that's outside the scope of this video because everyone has different routers. You're gonna need to search your different providers and find a video on how to do port forwarding. We're just gonna discuss what ports you're gonna need. So under the VPN service here, we have OpenVPN server and WireGuard server. OpenVPN is the older one, which is also a little bit slower. WireGuard is newer and faster. So we're gonna set up the WireGuard server And one of the first options you'll have here is allow access to local network. Again, this makes you a little bit less secure. In my case, I went ahead and turned it on because I wanted to have access to the other computers that are on my network, even when I'm away. But if you don't need access to the other computers on your network, go ahead and leave that in the toggled off position. If you toggle it on, you'll actually get a warning that it is a little bit dangerous to enable this. 
And in my case, I'm hitting yes and continuing on. The IP address range can be set from here. You can just leave it as the default. Uh, the main thing is you don't want to have any collisions. So using 10 is usually good to use because your residential router is usually going to be 192.168.something. Now the main thing that we need to grab from here is this port. This 51820 is the port that we're going to need to do port forwarding on our router. So I'm going to save that port to that notepad file that I started. So at this point we have our DDNS address and a port that we need to do port forwarding on the router. I guess at this point I'll cut over to how I do port forwarding on my Frontier router. Uh, that might cover some people, but other people will need to look up other videos on how to do the port forwarding. But essentially you're going to find the port forwarding section of your router and you're going to put in the IP address that was assigned to this device. It won't be this 10 address, it's going to be like 192.168.something that's assigned to this device. And you're going to go in the port forwarding and put the IP address that was assigned by your residential router to this router and this port number 51820 or whatever port that you get in your administration interface and set up the port forwarding. All right, so now this is my residential frontier router. We're gonna look for the firewall tab and then port forwarding. From here, you'll need to use the password that's usually on the, on the device itself. And then we can uh, select the device in this example, I'm actually using a uh, Unify router, but this would be the uh, Opal router. And then you're going to give it a good name. That way you know what it is once it gets added to the list. Leave TCP and UDP selected and type in that port number that we saved. You'll also put that port number in the uh, local area and then also finish off the port range with that same port number because we only need a single port. Hit add to add it to the list and you should now see your new uh, port forward rule in your list. And with that we can move on back to the Opal router. And then back over here on the WireGuard server we can hit start. So it is now started and now we can go over to the management tab. As I said, I am redoing this video so I already have a user here which I set up as Slate AX. Uh, but you won't see that so you'll, you'll simply hit add new user. You want to give it a name. I already use Slate AX so I guess I'll call this one demo and hit add. And now you'll see it has been assigned an IP address. And there's a little configuration uh, icon here. If you click on that, it's going to open up a window with a QR code. This is useful if you wanted to have your, your phone connect to the WireGuard server. That way your phone could also use your residential IP address. Uh, but in our case of using two routers, we're going to need to hit the plain text tab. And there's some information there that we're going to want to copy and paste into our notepad file. So select all that, copy, go over to our notepad file and paste and let's discuss some of these things here. So under interface, there's not really anything that we need to change. There's the IP address that was assigned to this demo user, uh, a listening port, a private key, and DNS. Really what we're gonna need to change is over here under peer. So by default, it's using the IP address and like I said, the IP address can change. So we want to use the dynamic DNS address that we enabled and paste that into just the IP address part. We want to leave the colon and the port number there. So I've copied and pasted that in. And there's the colon and the port number. Again, you need to set up port forwarding before you can have the WireGuard VPN service work on this other router. But for now, that is all the information we need. Now we need to switch over to the router that we're going to be taking with us, which in my case is the Slate AX. 
So I'm gonna disconnect from the GL SFT 1200. I'm gonna choose the GL AXT 1800, which is the Slate AX. So both of these routers, you log into them the same way. So 192.168.8.1 in your Chrome browser. I need to put in my password and log in. I already connected this to the Wi-Fi here. So now the only thing that I need to change is the VPN service. So we're gonna go, in this case, we're gonna go to WireGuard client. And we need to create a new group. All right, so we'll give it a, some kind of descriptive name. I guess we'll call it our, my, Home IP address, I guess. On the right side, we could drag in a file. We could probably save that file as a text file and it'll work, but we're gonna, down here, you can see manually add configuration. And I wanna give it a name again. This is like my home IP. And in this text area, we can go back to our notepad and we're gonna just copy the interface and the peer part that we uh, created in our notepad file. Paste this plain text and hit apply. And you'll see there's our, the name and there's our uh, dynamic DNS address and the port number. So now the WireGuard client is set up. We can go over to VPN dashboard and under WireGuard, we can hit enable. So in this demo, this pocket travel router is connected to its own internet and it's gonna travel through the internet to this pocket travel router that's gonna be sitting at my house while I travel and start sharing my residential IP address with this pocket travel router. Now, anything that I connect to this will have the exact same IP address as I would if, as if I were home sitting in my office. Um, the connection has been successful, so we see some traffic stats here. We see some up and down traffic there. Now let's do a little speed test. Uh, from the last video, you'll see that doing OpenVPN, the speed test was uh, a bit low, but using WireGuard is much faster. So in this little demo here, we were getting above 30 megabits per second for our download speeds and getting above 30 megabits per second for our upload speeds as well. And this is still using Wi-Fi. I imagine once I plug this in using the cable, these speeds will probably improve a bit. So 38 down, 37 up, and then 18 millisecond latency. That's great. So I guess now the only other thing to set on this little, uh, the one that will be, the pocket router that will be traveling with us is remember we have a configurable switch on the side. In the previous video, we had set that up to use OpenVPN, but now that we're using WireGuard, we're gonna to wanna to change what that little toggle button does. So under more, under more settings, hit toggle button settings. And right now it's uh, selected as OpenVPN, but we're gonna change that to the WireGuard client and hit apply. Now when we toggle that switch to the left, it's gonna turn on WireGuard and connect to this pocket router and use our residential IP address. And when we have that switch toggled to the right, it'll just be using whatever IP address is in the area that we are traveling. So for example, when you travel overseas to Europe, it might actually be beneficial to turn this off when you're not working that way you can take advantage of the different programs that are available on the streaming services over there, such as Netflix. When you travel around the country, you'll actually have different videos that are licensed to that region. So you'll have different video cho uh, choices on Netflix and other service providers while you have WireGuard off. But then when you turn that uh, switch back on and turn WireGuard on, we'll be using our residential IP address. So even while we're overseas, 
our Netflix catalog will actually start to show the the whatever catalog would be available to you when you were home. In my case, I'm in in Texas, so I, I would be seeing uh, the catalog that's available in the United States. Uh, this could also be useful if you have things such as uh, a sports package, uh, so like NBA League Pass. You might want to change your location to another country to avoid a blackout, or maybe while you're at another country, you want to use your residential IP address to avoid a blackout there. I don't know. But having that toggle switch turn on the wire guard or on or off is going to make it quick and easy to switch between your different options. And with that, that covers all of the things that I want to cover as far as the, the router. Thank you for watching.